Hi. I uh, promised I was going to do a gib adjustment video, and uh, yesterday I did one and watched it and got to laughing at myself so hard I deleted it, so I decided to do another one. Uh, what I want to show is that the, the over-adjusting, over-tightening of the gib is actually uh, bad, and how the proper way to, to adjust the gib to take all the play out but not have it put load on your screw and um, force torque into the screw. So I um, already got everything set up here. I've cleaned up my gibs, removed all the go uh, guards, oiled everything up, and I run about a half hour warm up cycle on it. So everything's warmed up and ready to go. Um, I don't have a cameraman, so what I'm going to do is actually just move the camera in onto the indicator itself. The indicator uh, is a stare. It measures in ten thousandths. And um, <coughs> don't really need that accurate to do this, but it, it helps. Uh, it also helps for setting backlash. Uh, ten thousandths, you can get it a lot more accurate. Um, on, on, this, on my ZX45, if I screw in on the GIV on this side, screw in this side, this tightens the gib. It's got a wedge type gib. And if I screw the screw in from this direction, it loosens it. So what I want to start out with doing is loosening both the screws, and I'm just going to take a punch, and I'm going to knock the gib loose. Uh, I'm going to loosen up about one full turn, and I'm going to knock the gib loose, and then at that point, I'm going to check the backlash to see how much I have with the gib not actually holding any, any force against the table. So I'll start out by doing that. I'll just loosen both screws one full turn. And just take gently punch this back in with the screwdriver. Okay. We heard this gib slide loose. All right, now I'm going to move the camera up to where it's actually on the indicator. Um, first thing you want to do in Mach 3 is make sure you have your backlash compensation off. Go to Config, Backlash, and um, check the backlash enabled. Make sure it's off. Click OK. Then I hit Tab, went into the MPG mode, and put the Jog mode in Step. Now I'm going to zoom in on the actual indicator. See if I can get this set up. Take me just a second here. I'm not too upper coordinated. Get it set up without too much glare. Let's see what I got. All right, that's not too bad. So now I'm going to take and step about 10 steps uh, in one direction just to get a good load on it. Maybe five will be enough. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll bring it back up here where we're actually on the zero. And I'll zero on my dial. Now I want to go the other direction and see what my actual backlash is. So I'm going to go two steps. So I should be at two thousandths. And then we'll see what the difference is. So I'll go one, two. And my difference right there is... I should have moved two, and I only moved, uh, looks like I need to move an addition. Let's just say I moved one. Just, just. Okay, what I want to do now is start tightening the give. I'll move back the other direction, re zero, and start tightening the give until I increase that back 
backlash, which means the give is actually putting force on it and causing it to um, make, have more backlash. So I'm going to adjust it up here till I just feel it. Okay. Back it, take it in a little bit. I think I went too far. I'll have to knock it back loose. Okay. Now I want to hit the check the backlash again to the left. There's one. And if you already notice, I had to move further. So let's go back. So let's say I had one um, thousandth of backlash before when I hit two. One, two. Still at one thousandth backlash. So go back again. Gonna tighten it up a little bit more. And what I'm looking for is take it up to like two thousandths backlash and that and then back it back down to just back it down until I have one. So we're gonna go quarter of a turn and we'll see what we got now. One, two. Okay, it still could put some more on. Back again. Let's snug it up just a little more. Get about another quarter turn. Probably won't be that much of a turn once I get it to do it. One, two. Ah, now see, I've tightened it up and I've increased the backlash. So what I want to do at this point is back it up just a little bit until I'm right back down to just my 1,000th backlash and then lock it down there. Um, on this ZX45, these skinny screws that lock this give will actually force the give in more pressure. Um, I don't really tighten them down real tight, just enough to where they won't work loose. Now I'm going to back off about an eighth of a turn. So the screws themselves on this thing will will bind the give against it uh, the way. So uh, I'm just going to take and knock this back with the screwdriver. Go back and zero again. I'm moving to the right. We'll move three that time to put re zero this gauge. Okay, and I'm going to move two to the left. I'm still a little tight. So I'm going to back it off a little more. Move it to the left a couple. Re zero. Move to the right. I made it worse. I don't know how I did that. Let's move to the left a couple. I might have got it just a bad reading. This glare might be making it hard for you to see. Okay, I'm going to move to the left too. One, two. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely tight. So, I'm going to back off a little more. Okay, I'm going to move two to the left. Oops, raise there on my gauge. Oh, okay. Hang on. I didn't move to the right first. I got to take up all the play. All right. Zero my gauge. Two to the left. Still acting a little tight. I'm not moving these screws much so so we're gonna move back to the I'm just gonna jog it back and forth quite a bit here to free things up and then back it back to the right coming back to the top up here so it's easier to read 
ReZero. And tell it to move two thousandths to the left. Alright. I moved. Boy, I could loosen it up just a tiny bit more. But. I'm going to just a tiny bit more and try to come back to that one thousandth okay I'm going to move to the right several and then come back to the left several to bring this gauge back up to the top re zero and go to the left there we go okay at that point, I'm, I'm pretty close. I'm within a 10,000. So I took it up till it was too tight and actually caused an extra backlash. And then I backed it off just until I have uh, the same backlash I did totally free. So all the play is gone. Um, now I can lock down the screws. Once you lock down the screws, though, you got to recheck it. Uh, like I said, because the screws will make a give bind. I don't tighten mine down real tight. I just... Uh, <coughs> Just adjust them there. Uh, now, as far as backlash compensation from this point here, um, the way I do it is I know that I have basically, let's say, one thousandths of backlash. Um, I'm going to move um, to the left ten thousand and zero my gauge indicator. Wrong terminology. I'm not a machinist. Okay. Now, to check the actual backlash, I do it in ten thousandths and see how much in the ten thousandths it didn't actually move. So, I'm going to go ten to the right. Okay, that shows that I'm 1.8 short. So I'm going to set the backlash compensation at 1.8, and then we'll try it again and see what I have. So let me get it back up to the top here. I'm going to move, work it back and forth several times. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to zero my gauge, and I'm going to go 10 around again. I've turned the backlash compensation on. I put 1.8 in to add. Let me get this to zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, I overshot by five. So go back down here. Now you can play with this in one thousand increments, but I found it, um, it's it's a little little better to use it at ten thousand, and then do the the difference. So I'm going to move to the left once first, and then zero this. Now we're going to go ten ten again to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just a tiny bit past. So let's go back the other direction and see what the 10 is. Oh, and if you look at Mach 3 right now, it doesn't say that I moved 10,000. It's it's actually uh, sitting a tenth off of the 10,000. And that has to do with um, the ratio that you have your um, uh, steps per set at when we're talking about 10,000s here. 
Um, they don't even end up even numbers on the ten thousands for the ratio. I'm at a thousand steps on this. So let's re zero. Step left one. And you can see that's going more than one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm one ten thousandth off on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Moves easier one way than it does the other. Okay. But we're, we're talking about a half a thousandth here that I'm playing with. So um, that's how you set the work, the, uh, the compensation, the backlash compensation. I'm going to get back up to the top and try it in just 1,000 increment. Shut it back off. Let's see what I got. So it's step 1,000 to the right, and I'm a 10,000th over. So that's probably just the uh, um, the screw. Let's go two. Still run three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's pretty good. So I'm going to hold it right there. All right. I hope this video makes sense as far as the give adjustment. You do the same thing on Y the same way. Um, on Z, because I have so much weight on this head, um, this really isn't a good method for doing that. Um, the, the way I've, I've done it, because Z will, if, if you get the gibs too tight, Z will want to bind, and the motor is actually pushing the head down. Uh, once it runs, then vibration will shake the head and take up that play and and drop the head. So the way I've been setting the Z-axis on this is I have a one and a half thousandths feeler gauge. And I uh, where the saddle meets the way on on the uh, <coughs> the column, I, I slide that. I loosen the give until I can slip the feeler gauge in between the saddle and the way. And... Um, once I can get that one and a half thousandth in between the top, then I, I, I adjust the gib in about a quarter of a turn, and the feeler gauge will no longer fit in between the two of them, and I just lock it down there. Uh, then I can just go ahead and do my uh, compensation, I mean my backlash compensation the same way. But as far as the gib adjustment, I use a feeler gauge for that. Uh, it, it's quick and easy, and it, it seems to be working out really well for me. So that's it for this video. I hope, hope it makes sense. If there's any questions, if it wasn't clear, uh, uh, be sure to ask me, and I, I go back and point it out again. Uh, thank you for uh, viewing my videos. Bye.